First, let's quickly go over some best practices. Before going further, let's clarify what we mean by DALI in this context. DALI is a generative AI model, one specifically that turns text prompts into images. And as of the time of creating this course, the best way to access it is by using ChatGPT4, which is how we'll be using it in the demo. Now, what steps exactly do you take to turn your wireframes into prototypes? First, you draw your wireframe or generate it using a different AI model. Then you provide DALI with the wireframe image as well as some text prompts helping it understand what's in the image and what you'd like out of your prototype. We iterate through this process several times, providing feedback on what's been generated till we get something that we like. The best wireframes to provide for DALI are those that are clear and simple. Each section of the wireframe should be labeled indicating its general purpose. You should accompany any wireframes that you want to create prototypes with, with text, describing what's in the diagram and how ChatGPT and DALI should interpret it. Interestingly, you can use AI to generate your wireframes as well. But at this point in the technology, if you have humans that are up to the job, you might find that they do a bit better with wireframe generation. So here's an example of a wireframe. This was originally generated by DALI and fixed up by a designer. It's an image of a Pomodoro timer broken up into sections. In the middle is the main display, on the right are some options, and on the bottom is a start, stop, and reset button. For the demo, you can use this wireframe, just to take a screenshot of it, or create a wireframe of your own to give it a shot using your own idea. Finally, let's review some challenges that we might need to deal with when turning wireframes into prototypes. As they say in the web development world, garbage in, garbage out. So if you don't have high quality input materials, as in the wireframes, you won't get a very high quality prototype. Make sure that your wireframe is clear, neat, and complete. You should be prepared for unexpected results, such as elements of the prototype that don't exactly correspond to the wireframe, since generative AI is still a new and experimental technology. Just work with any errors that it makes and use your feedback to help refine the output. Remember, the purpose of using generative AI isn't to have the AI do your work for you, it's to work with the AI to make you a much more efficient and competent worker. Well, it's time to open up ChatGPT and get started on the demo, in which we'll take our wireframe and turn it into a prototype using... So here we are in ChatGPT. And let's begin by using ChatGPT to generate the wireframes that become our prototype. If you already have wireframes, say from your design team, then you don't need to do this step, but it's still a very cool skill and will only take a minute to learn. So we'll say to ChatGPT, I'd like to create a wireframe for my Pomodoro timer application. What more information do you need before we get started? Note that I'm not just asking for the wireframe just like that. I'm getting some back and forth going and making sure that ChatGPT clarifies the additional information that it might need. I've been intentionally vague so that it'll have lots of questions to ask me before it gets started on the wireframe. Let's see what the response is. And ChatGPT responds with a wealth of clarifying questions core features, target audiences, design preferences, and more. You can take the time to clarify as many of these questions as you want. In my case, I'll clarify just one or two and ask it to just choose for me for the rest. I'll respond with the following clarifications. It should be a web application. The target audience is professionals. And then I'll tell ChatGPT, you can use sensible defaults for all other clarifications. Then I'll say, go ahead and create the first wireframe. Note that throughout my instructions, I'm clear, but we're letting ChatGPT do the heavy lifting wherever I don't feel comfortable making the design decision. Wow, and given this prompt, ChatGPT certainly does not disappoint, especially not with DALI in its toolbox. Let's see what it came up with. 
First, ChatGPT output a bunch of text prompts that tell us what's going to be in the wireframe. If you'll recall, this was something that we'd need as input when providing the wireframe to kind of help ChatGPT create the prototype. Below that, it's drawn elements of our Pomodoro timer using this kind of ASCII pseudocode with Unicode symbols kind of creating an outline and the text inside being something we can imagine is kind of like our timer. Pretty cool, kind of reminds me of playing a roguelike DOS game. Finally, it creates a very impressive visual representation of the wireframe. Now that we have our wireframe, we can go ahead and create the prototype. So in the context of this chat, ChatGPT already has all the information that it needs to create our prototype. However, to be a little bit truer to the theme of this course, we'll create a new conversation where it has none of this context, and we'll kind of write it out manually to help improve our understanding of the topic. So we'll make a new chat. Now I've had my designers fix up the wireframe that ChatGPT created, and I'll drop it in here. So just a cleaned up version based on the wireframe that ChatGPT created. Remember that working with generative AI is not generative AI doing your work for you, but us working together with generative AI to be better and more efficient designers and developers. So we'll put this image into ChatGPT and here's an interesting question I always like to ask. We'll just ask ChatGPT, what is this? ChatGPT comes up with an impressive response showing it is quite correctly interpreted what is in the image. So ChatGPT correctly answers that it's a Pomodoro timer web application. We've established that it's able to interpret the image that we've created, which means that we're basically ready to create a prototype, but we'll have ChatGPT help us along the way. So we'll say, I'd like to take this wireframe and turn it into an interactive prototype. What more information do you need to proceed? Once again, we're prompting ChatGPT to give us the clarifying questions that it would like before getting started. So ChatGPT responds, asking us to prompt it further on details of the functionality, the user interactions, the design specifications, and so forth. Very good clarifying questions. Like last time, we'll focus on just answering one or two and let ChatGPT fill in the rest. Another important question is the platform and tools, since this tells us what we want our output format. If you're trying to get a prototype for Figma, if it outputs it in an HTML CSS format, that won't be very useful. So we have to specify what the output format would be. So we'll say, I'd like the output format to be HTML, CSS, JavaScript in a single document. I want a blue and green color scheme. You can use sensible defaults for the rest. Go ahead and write the first prototype. ChatGPT responds with a very large and sophisticated HTML document containing the code for a Pomodoro timer. It has CSS, HTML, and JavaScript just like we asked. And voila, an idea to a prototype in minutes. Finally, let's work with ChatGPT by refining this design. Let's say, it looks great, but I'd like a red or black color scheme instead. And just like that, the color scheme of our prototype has been updated. In this demo, we learned how to use ChatGPT and DALI to create a wireframe from a text description and then a prototype from a wireframe. Remember that the limits of this technology are only limited by your creativity. So keep working with the technology and remember, 
Using generative AI is about working together with the AI to become better developers and designers ourselves and create great products and applications. Thank you.